Namaste. My name is Professor Vikran Palakshar. I welcome you all in the state level webinar on the cyber security. This webinar is organized by Marshi Karvi Sri Sikshan Sausta Sri Siddhivnayak Maina Mahavitale Students Development Department. First of all, I worship in the name of Marshi Dhondo Keshav Karve, founder of our Sausta, Baya Karve and Bharat Mata. We, Sri Siddhivinayak Maila Mahavidyalaya, organizing the webinar on the cyber security as a need of the current situation. We are in the lockdown and therefore we take this opportunity to organize the webinar on the cyber security. At the beginning of this webinar, our Saustas Vice Chairman and our college College Development Committee President, Honorable N.D. Patil, sir, delivering the inaugural address, I request Honorable N.D. Patil, sir, to kindly deliver the address and inaugurate this webinar virtually. Start. Dear friend, Namaste. Myself, N.D. Patil, Vice Chairman, Maharashtra Garbhaya, Sri Shikshan Samstha. First of all, I welcome you on behalf of Marshi Garbe Sri Shikshan Sansta, Sri Sridhi Vinayak Mahila Mahavidyale Pune. Friends, I first of all congratulate my staff, Dr. Vikran Palat Shah, regarding arrangement of such type of need-based webinar on cyber crime, cyber law. We all of you know that we are going through, passing through the situation of COVID-19 where well, the total life of human being is changed which is going towards natural food and use of technology that is cashless economy, PTM, payment through PTM and use of internet. And exactly here use of internet that gives tremendous chance to the cyber crime. Nowadays if you have gone through newspaper and articles of different magazines you will come to know that the crime on the field in the society that is no doubt reduced because of lockdown but on other hand on the contrary cyber crime is increased tremendously and so there is a need to create awareness about the cyber law and cyber crime how it happens how it takes place because so many internet users they are either ignorant they have less knowledge and they are they are ignorant uh, ignorant rather uh, than uh, having a deep knowledge and so i am sure that this type of webinar will create awareness among the students awareness among the beginner who use, who are using internet uh, in the beginning period or who are just now have started using internet so i again congratulate my staff alat shah and also participants here Virtually, I inaugurate the webinar on cyber crime. Thank you very much. Respected sir, you always provide us a motivation to implement the new things. I am very thankful that you have inaugurated this webinar by your virtual message. As well as, I am very thankful to the principal of our college, Dr. Sanita Atule, that for providing me the opportunity to conduct the webinar on the cyber crime. So without much, uh, wasting much time, now we begin to our discussion of the webinar topic. So our topic is cyber security. Before uh, knowing the meaning of the cyber security, now we have to imagine why it is necessary. Now it is the need of the time. We all are in the lockdown period and therefore we all are working from home. We means we teacher, the professional, the students to do our day-to-day -day activities related to our work. What we are using? We are using the medium of the internet. Now, internet is the most development technology of a time. And therefore, whenever we are using the technology, the things we have to consider, one thing that is the pros of the technology and second thing that is the cons of the technology. So, in the internet, there are pros as well as the cons. Easily we are considering the cons. 
but usually we are neglecting or we are forgetting about the cons and therefore to consider the cons of the internet we have to consider the cyber security during this webinar you can definitely come to know why cyber security is the most important and why we have to consider the cyber security because now it is need of the time okay so first of all now we have to know what is the meaning of the cyber security the term cyber security is used to refer to the security offered through online services to protect your online information so cyber security is what these are the services these are the services provided to you to protect your online information whenever we are using the internet at that time we have to deal with the number of kind of our personal information whenever we are using the internet whenever you are using the internet application at that time we have to load upload our personal information and therefore on the other hand it is very necessary to protect the per, uh, personal information uploaded by us and therefore the cyber security is such kind of application such kind of online services those are protecting our online information by the way of physical technical environmental regulation and in the compliance mode therefore now the cyber security is the need of the time with an increasing amount of people getting connected to internet the security threats that cause massive harm are increasing also and this is the better scenario for that in the period of the lockdown number of people they are connected to the inter internet and therefore there is a massive harm to their security to their personal information security as well as the personal uh, uh, transaction security and therefore the cyber security is the services those are providing the proper security for that and therefore it is the cyber security now why it is important why cyber security is in need of the time why it is so important nowadays why these are the reasons our world today is ruled by technology and we can't do without it and it at all from booking our flight tickets to catching up with an old friend technology plays an important role in it now we are over dependent on the technology we have to in the situation of the lockdown we can't do nothing we can't go outside we can't go to our office we can't go to our college we can't go to our classroom a classroom that's why we have to rely most on what we have to rely on the technology we are doing each and everything with the use of the technology we are purchasing the groceries we are we are doing the conversation with the friend as a teacher we are teaching to our students with the use of the online platform as a student we are learning with the use of the online platform as a professional we are using a various online platform to do our work from home means what we are dealing with the technology at most and therefore do we when we are dealing with the internet technology same time we have to consider about our security and therefore cyber security is one that is providing the proper security to us okay however the same technology may expose you when it's vulnerable and could lead to loss of essential data what i told at the beginning when we are using the technology there are two things one is the pros one is the cons pros is uh, make your work easy but cons make your work vulnerable and when it becomes vulnerable that may lead to loss of your essential data therefore if we want to prevent the threats like this if we want to prevent the loss of essential data at that time we have to consider the cyber security okay that's why it is most important cyber security is necessary since it helps in securing data from threats such as data theft or misuse also safeguards your system from viruses why it is necessary because it secures our data from the various kind of threats later on we have discussed what are the threats to our data as well as the data theft 
as well as the misuse of the data as well as it safeguards our system from the unnecessary viruses. Therefore, cyber security is the most important one. It is a need of the time nowadays. Okay. Now, cyber security becomes important for business organization also. Why? Because their system, those are uh, connected from one network to another network. And when the systems are connected to the one network to another network, at that time, it will become a very sub target for the criminals. And therefore, if the business organization, they want to secure all their networks at that time, they must implement the cyber security measures to their system. And therefore, cyber security becomes most integral part of the business organization also if they have the proper security techniques with them at that time they can minimize the losses to their system and they can provide a very secure uh, environment to themselves as well as to their customers therefore cyber security becomes very important nowadays and it becomes the need of the time now, what are the objectives of the cyber security property? There are the three types of objectives. That is the confidentiality, means don't disclose the information to unknown sources. Then integrity, to um, provide accurate information to the known sources, authorized sources only. And availability, means what? To provide the access to the authorized sources only. These are the three objectives. Now, in detail, we have to discuss this one by one. First of all, confidentiality. The property that information is not made available or disclosed to unauthorized individuals, entities, or processes means what? The information should make confidential. That should not be disclosed to any kind of unauthorized person, individual, entities, or processes. That is the confidentiality. Confidentiality refers to protecting information from being accessed by unauthorized party. In other words, only the people who are authorized to do so can gain access to sensitive data. Means what? The information should be secured from the unauthorized party. In any condition, in any situation, that information should not disclose to unauthorized parties. Those can misuse that information. The information should be provided to the people those are authorized. Okay? They that is called as the confidentiality. And therefore, if the if anyone means we want to make our information confidential, at that time we must implement the cyber security to our system, to our information, as well as business organization, they have to make confidential the information of their Customer. Nowadays, we teachers, we teachers, we are dealing with our students with the use of the uh, Zoom application. Okay, Zoom-like application. At that time, when we are conducting the lectures, we are interacting with our students through the applications like Zoom. At that time, we must aware our students that they don't upload any unnecessary information on such app. With this, we can aware them that if they uh, upload any unnecessary information at that time, their confidentiality, uh, confidentiality of their information may be in danger. Therefore, we should take care about the confidentiality of our information that should not be disclosed to any unknown or unauthorized parties. Now, what is the integrity? The property of safeguarding the accuracy and completeness of the information that is called as the integrity. Integrity refers to ensuring the authenticity of information, that information is not altered and that the source of the information is genuine. So whatever information uploaded on the online platform, that information should not be altered and that information the source of the information must keep genuine. Many a times what happens, we are uploading our information on the website, on the internet platform. 
and that information is altered in unnecessary nature. At that time, what happened? That is the violation, violation of the rule of the information uploading. Therefore, whenever uh, the information that we have uploaded, we must take care that should not be altered. It is called as the integrity. And we, if we have the cyber security uh, platforms with us at that time, easily no one can able to alter our information and it will keep accurately on the in, uh, on the integrity platform support as as a as a teacher if i want to provide the information to my students at that time i i should confirm that the more that i am using that should that is proper that should be genuine because why when my students they are connecting with me with the use of the online platform at that time they are uploading the inf their information on that so it is my responsibility that i have to maintain the integrity of their information therefore the mode that i am choosing that mode should be very secure and very genuine okay the next one availability the property of being accessible and usable upon demand by authorized entity so availability means what whenever the information is uh, where means that information is accessible by authorized users only. So suppose if I have uploaded something on a website, and if I want to, uh, I want to access that information only. I am able to access that information. No one can able to access that information apart from me. Only I will be uh, able to access that information that is called as the accessibility availability means what only authorized users they are able to access that information it is called as the availability of the information okay so in this way uh, these are the objectives of the cyber security now cyberspace becomes a battleground nowadays definitely it is a battleground why because the number of cyber crimes those are increased and whenever you are using, we are uh, using the internet means it is the battlefield for us. We must take care of the security. If we ignore the security, easily we can lose this battle. Therefore, whenever in the period of the lockdown now, at the most we, we are using the internet at that time means what? It is a, one of the kind of the battle. One of the kind of the battle of the benefit, one of the kind of the battle of the losses but if we want to win this ma battle at that time we have to balance the benefit as well as the losses at that time only we can win the battle therefore cyber space is a battleground nowadays now what is cyber attack cyber attack is a cyber crime a malicious attempt using digital technologies to cause personal or property loss or damage and or still or alter confidential personal or organizational data. It is called as a cyber attack. It is called as a cyber crime. So whenever there is any kind of malicious attempt on the digital technology used by you that will cause that will cause personal or property loss or damage to you, as well as that will steal or alter your confidential or personal confidential personal or organizational information such kind of malicious attempt such kind of, kind of malicious crime is called as a cyber attack or cyber crime means without taking any authorized permission from you any kind of attack made on your digital system and that attack may damage or loss your personal information as well as personal property such kind of attack such kind of crime is called as a cyber attack or cyber crime so these are the percentages of the cyber attack financial fraud 11 percent data networks for for 17 percent threat from the proprietary information 20 percent system penetration from the outsider external 25 percent denial of service 27 percent 
author access by unauthorized insider 71% and most dangerous virus is attack that is AP virus. Okay. Now what are the major security problems? Virus, hacker, malware, Trojan orphan, password cracking. These are the major security problems. In that first of all viruses and worms. 85% already we discussed 85% of the cyber crimes happen due to the help of the viruses and worms. Virus means what? It is the program. It is the uh, program that is loaded onto your computer without your knowledge and runs against your PC. Means without giving any uh, authentic permission by you, the program loaded onto your computer and that will damage to your system that is called as the virus. Virus is what? It is one of the kind of the malware attached to a career such as email, message or word processing and when you run that kind of email attachment or word processing files on your computer and due to that the program is run and that program damaged your system that is called as the virus okay so it is what it is one of the kind of attachment it is one of the kind of attachment comes through a career like mail or file and when you open that mail or file and automatically that program runs on your computer and that damages your system that is called as the virus now worm worm means what malware can autonomously spread itself without a career using information about connected computer means what whenever you are using internet and you if you have opened any uh, uh, any unauthorized site which is not safe and due to that some kind of program runs on your computer and that damages your system that is called as a worm okay so it is the difference between viruses and worm. What is the solution on that to avoid the virus attack or worm attack on your computer? Very easy. Install secure secu uh, install security suit that protects the computer against threats such as viruses and worms. Security suit means what? Antivirus. You can purchase any authenticate antivirus. You can install on your computer. And whenever you, you are using internet or whenever you are using computer system, you run that uh, antivirus program easily, you can avoid the virus and worms attack with the help of that. Now, next one is hackers. Hackers means what? Hackers means these are the unauthorized person. Those breaks your administrative controls without your knowledge. And then they gain access to your computer system. Those persons are called as the hackers. Means what? They are unknown. We don't have the knowledge. But they get our uh, the administrative control and then they gain access of our system, our computers. These are called as the hackers. There are the three types of the hacker. White hat hacker, gray hat hackers and black hat hackers. In that first of all, white hat hackers. White hat hackers means what? Ethical computer hacker. Means with the use of the rules, the regulation and laws to protect the computer system, to protect the website. The hackers, they break the programs. They get, they break the administrative controls. Such kind of hackers are called as the white hat hackers. For example, means in our country, our military organization, they are having their website on that a very confidential data is there. At that time, they have recruited such kind of hackers to protect their programs from the uh, various kind of attacks. So therefore, these hackers are the ethical hackers. Then grey hat hackers. Grey hat hackers are also the ethical hackers. But only what is the difference between white hat and grey hat? Sometimes they violate the laws as well as the ethical standards for the protection of the systems, for from the protection of the cyber attacks. These kind of hackers are called as the grey hat hackers. Only the difference is what sometimes, if necessary, they violate the law and via typical ethical standards. Okay, these types of hackers are called as the grey hat hackers. Now, last one is black 
black hat hacker. That is the most dangerous. A black hat hacker is a hacker who violates computer security for little reason beyond maliciousness or personal gain. Means what? These are the hackers purposefully. They hack the system and through that they are targeting their personal gain. Such kind of hackers are called as the black hat hackers. Means what? There is a very dangerous intention of these hackers. Purposefully, they hack your system, they get the access of your administrative control, and then they are getting uh, their personal gain through the stealing of your personal information. They misuse your information, and then they get the personal gain. These are the black hat hackers. Understood? So in this way, these are the types of the hackers. So now the next thing comes how to prevent hacking. It may be impossible to prevent computer hacking. However, effective security controls including strong passwords and the use of firewall can help to prevent hacking. So it is impossible to prevent the hacking. Why? Because these hackers they are the expert in the field of the technology, information technology. Therefore uh, we don't know when these hackers they are hacking our computer and therefore many a times it is impossible to prevent the hacking but one thing we can do to prevent the hacking that whenever we are opening any kind of social account any kind of e-wallets account like Paytm, Google Pay at that time we must implement a very strong password to such account with the help of the very strong password we can prevent the hacking as well as firewalls whenever you are using the computer system at that time we have to on the on the firewall setting from the system setting many a times we forget to on the firewall setting from our system setting so if we don't on the firewall at that time it is very easy for hackers to hack our system therefore always remember that we must on the firewall from the computer now Next one is the malware. The word malware that comes from the term malicious software. It is a combination of two words, malicious software and the word that came that is malware. Malware means from that software that has some malicious intent and which is installed on a user's computer without that user's consent. So there is a malicious intent. Malicious intent means what? There is an intent that to steal the information, to misuse the information, to copy the information, that is the malicious system. And without our consent, if that software runs on our computer, that is called as the malware. And malware mostly, they are coming from the internet. So whenever uh, we are using the website, some pop-up website comes up. And when we click on those pop-ups, at that time, what happens? malware comes from that and then it can damage our system the very good example the, uh, is what whenever in the mobile we are opening any uh, application and suppose unnecessary ads comes pop up during that course that is the example so whenever we are using the internet we we'll have to avoid the clicking on the unnecessary unauthorized website if we click on that then there is a chance that malware can automatically install in our system and that will damage the system. Okay. Ransomware. Ransomware is a very good example of the malware. We know in the last year what happened. Ransomware that automatically installed in the software of our banks and due to the ransomware, uh, many uh, banking software corrupted. Ransomware is what? Ransomware is the unethical organization. If the ransomware is installed on our system, at that time it demands the money from the user. And if we didn't pay the money, at that time it will destroy our computer. And many computers were destroyed in the last year due to this ransomware. And this ransomware that came from where? Came from the email, came from the unauthorized website so understood this so malware can usually spread itself from one computer to another either as a virus or as a malware that is transferred from one computer to another 
means what? It spread from one to another. It is like a COVID-19. <laughs> COVID-19, uh, what happened in the COVID-19? That spread from one person to the another person. Means it is like a malware. Malware is like malware in some sense. That spread from one person to another person. Now, how to stop malware? Download an anti-malware program that also prevent infections. Is what antivirus? In antivirus, there is anti-malware program. If we, we have antivirus, we can prevent malware that uh, comes in your system. Then do not download from unknown sources, unknown website. Activate network threat protection, firewall, antivirus. With the help of these, easily you can stop malware. Now, Trojan Orpest. Trojan Orpest is also a serious kind of viruses and very common type of virus. Trojan horse, this word came from the battle of the Troy, the story of the Troy. If you have watched the Troy movie, then you can you can definitely know what is Trojan horse. If you don't know Trojan horse, then do one thing. Watch the Troy movie during the period of the lockdown. You can come to know about the Trojan horse. Okay. So, Trojan orphans are email viruses that can duplicate themselves, steal information, or harm the computer system. These viruses are the most serious threats to computers. Trojan horses, these are what? These are the email viruses. These are mostly came from the email attachment. If we open the attachment and if that attachment contains the uh, Trojan horse, at that time that will be automatically installed on our system. They duplicate themselves, they spread in all your computer system, they steal information or they can harm your computer system, they can corrupt your data, they can corrupt your uh, important files and these are very serious things. Now how to avoid Trojan's attack? Six, install security uh, suits, uh, antiviruses, you can with the help of that easily, uh, you can protect your system from the Trojan attacks as well as do not click on the unknown link as well as do not open the unknown email attachment. See, on your screen there is a one uh, screenshot is there that is a screenshot of the Avast virus that Avast virus found the Trojan and protected uh, the system. Okay. Now password cracking. Password cracking is a very common type of the cyber attack attack nowadays. Password attacks are attacks by hackers that are able to determine passwords or find passwords to different protected electronic areas and social uh, network. Already I told you whenever you are opening a, uh, account on a social media or any uh, any wallet at that time for that account you must have a very strong password. If do, you don't have a strong password, easily the hacker can find your password and they can crack. Password cracking is for identifying, crack your password. And if you have a very simple password, at that time it can be easily cracked and hacker can get it. And then you have a very dangerous loss due to that. So it is the password cracking. Now how to secure that? Use always a strong password. That already I told you, never use same password for two different sites. So, if you have more than one account, at that time for each and every account, you must have the different password. Don't use a common password for all accounts. For every account, we make implement a different password. Okay. Now, insider attack. Attack to an organization carried out by someone who is inside that organization, either by himself or with convenience of outsider. So, insider attack means what the attack on the system done by the person who is known to the system, who is inside, uh, who is uh, connected with the business. This kind of attacks happen on the business organization. The person who is already known, if that person attacks on the system, that kind of attack is called as the insider attack. Himself, that person. Uh, attacked on the system or with the convenience of outsider that person can attack on the system. Difficult to counter using technical methods as the insider may have valid credential to access the system. It is difficult to catch that person because that person already have the 
credentials of you. Then external attack. Attacks to an organization carried out by external agent requires either valid credentials or the exploitation of some vulnerability to gain access to the system. The attack done by the external major, uh, agent who is unknown to you means like a hacker. That attacks are called as an external attack. So malicious and accidental damage. Cyber security is most concerned with cyber attacks. Cyber accidents are accidents an event that can cause loss or damage to an individual business or public body. If in the accident, if the proper take, taking care is not there regarding the credential, at that time the accidental damage is happened and in the accidental damage, if the loss is there at that time, that loss, that damage is very dangerous. Okay? Many public websites are made. If those public websites, they are not having the proper secured cyber security wizards with them at that time such kind of accidental damage happens to them and if these accidental damages are you known it will create a serious issues to their subscriber many times in the last week we have the news that crore of geo users their data went public this is what this is the one of the example of the accidental damage. So therefore, the public website they must have the very strong security measures for them. Now the next latest trend information security threat. Now these the, these are some latest trends for the information security threat that is called as the hacktivism hack plus activism. These are the tools of that website defacements redirects, denial of service attacks, identity theft, email bombing, website mirroring, dogging to gather information using source on the internet. These are the latest tools one by one we have to do. In that first of all website defacement. Website defacement is for hacking and altering the website of a company website. Means what? Hackers they are hacking this website and they alter the information. On this website. So it is a very dangerous kind of attack. Many a times, many a times we are hearing the news that the website of such and such company is, company, uh, is hacked and all the information is altered on that. This is called as a website defacement and this is a newer technology of the cyber crime or cyber fraud. Okay, then identity fraud or identity Stealing of someone's identity and misuse of that. It is called as the identity fraud or identity theft. Someone, someone steals your identity and misuse that identity to do a fraud. That is called as the identity theft. Means what? Someone uh, copies your information okay, and then that person to produce your legitimate, uh, uh, your legitimate identity and then due to that the fraud is happened that is called as the identity fraud or identity theft. Next one is doxing. Doxing is also a very dangerous cyber crime nowadays. Doxing is what? Process of gathering the information and then releasing those, that information publicly that is called as the that doxing. Doxing is what? That steals the information and releases this that information publicly. And that information is a, a very sensitive data, personal information of the individual. And when someone steals that information and releasing publicly that information, that is called as the doxing. Okay. Then denial of service. Denial of service attack. This is also very common nowadays. Attempt to make a machine or network resource unavailable, unavailable to its intended user. This is called as the denial of service attack. A very good example. Suppose if you are purchasing uh, something from the e-commerce website, you have you purchase procedure, you have performed, and now you have to pay the money. And when you 
uh, you are paying the money at that time you entered your banking credentials in that and then you, uh, you click on the submit button and when you click on the submit button after some time you uh, on your screen the message is displayed that unable to process your network uh, your uh, unable to uh, process your request but at the same time money is debited from your card but your purchase procedure is not completed means what this is the denial of a service attack where how this denial of service attack happens when we are purchasing these things from the unknown sources unauthenticated sources at that time this is the denial of service attack so whenever we are purchasing any kind of e-commerce product at that time we should use a very valid and authenticated public uh, e-commerce domains. Okay. Then key techniques, phishing. Phishing is a very common technique nowadays for a cyber crime. Phishing means what? Attempt to acquire sensitive information like bank account, information or an account password by posing as a legitimate entity in an electronic communication. Means what? Suppose, the very good example of that if you have a debit or credit card, then someone calls you and told you that that person is talking from the bank and that person told you that your card is corrupted and to again reactivate your card, we require your personal information like your card number, like your password and OTP. And if we provide that information to that person, that attack is called as a phishing attack and nowadays it is a very common thing of the cyber crime therefore always be aware someone it calls you and told you that person is uh, talking calling from the bank don't disclose your any kind of banking information to that person because it is a phishing attack any bank never ask you your password as well as your card details so be aware of that so it is the phishing attack okay most common security mistakes that we are making when we are using the technology okay because already at the beginning what i told you there are pros as well as there are cons of the technology so whenever and already we discussed whenever we are using the website the internet that we are on the battle battleground so we must take care whenever we are in the battle position what we are always alert so therefore whenever you are using the internet we must be alert so which kind of common mistakes we are doing poor password management always we are not making a implementing a strong password to our account so always implement a very strong password not locking the computer while unattended if we are not sitting in front of our computer still we are keep our computer on and uh, suppose if we are not sitting in front of and during that time anyone comes and make changes in your system you will be you will be victim of the cyber attack then opening email attachment from unknown addresses we have received many kind of mails spam mails in that if any kind of uh, unknown address is there and from that any attachment we open there will be a virus in that and we will be victim of the attack of virus not running antivirus program in India we are not running uh, properly authenticated antivirus program we have the antivirus but that is a crack copy and crack copy never protects you from the cyber attack so therefore, always run a very authenticated, valid antivirus program on your computer. Sharing of information and as well as our machine, only share information on authenticated uh, source. Only share your computer system to authenticate person only. Finally, take care of that. Not reporting security violation. Many a times, what we are not reporting security violation so if you feel your security is breakdown always report that to the concerned authorities on 
attendant paper work paper work we are not attending properly means we are using the crack box which OS lives the operating system we are running on our computer that is a many times there we are using the crack copy of that antivirus a crack copy we are using means what we don't have the proper key security key of that product key of that without product key we are running on and those on our computer if we are using this then we are in danger unprotected electronic data like email usb drive pen drive cd we must uh, use a protective electronic data uh, data carrier okay improper information handling passing of information over phone we are passing the information the example that i told you bankers example i am calling from banking and over phone we are passing a essential information so this type of uh, these types of common security mistakes we have to avoid okay we have to alert every time when we are using it. So, cyber security is everyone's responsibility. It is a, it, it's everyone's responsibility. Suppose if I am using the internet, so it is my responsibility. I have to take care of my security. If uh, I am a teacher, I am a delivery, delivering a lecture to a uh, internet platform, I have to consider my security as well as my student security. If I am uh, I am a uh, professional person, I am working from home. At that time, I have to consider my security as well as the, my organization security. So it is the responsibility of everyone. In uh, the cyber crime, we India we are at the tenth position, but now in the period of the lockdown, the cyber crime is rapidly increasing in India. Also, therefore, in the period of lockdown, we have to take care. Of our cyber security. USA, China, Germany, Britain, Brazil, Spain, Italy, France, Italy. These are the technological advancement countries. They are uh, ahead of us. But now we are also rapidly we are uh, using the internet and therefore the cases of the cyber crimes are also rapidly increasing in our country. So now I want to conclude my session, my webinar. I hope that my presentation will be helpful for you to improve your knowledge about the cyber security and to overcome several security loopholes on your computer operation. Also, it helps to spread awareness among normal people like you about emerging security threats. And simple and practical prevention methods are explained in this webinar to protect the information. So I hope that we, uh, we all got the primary information regarding the cyber security from this webinar, I have tried to explain you as much as possible regarding the cyber security. And then, at the end, I want to conclude my session with this very good uh, video message regarding the cyber security. Kindly watch and listen this video. Well, when it comes to internet usage, we have to be aware and safe of the problems. So, cyber safety it is. We use computers at office, at home. At shops too, even while we are on the air. Technology helps us in fighting crimes. It plays a key role in ensuring safety by addressing security issues. Its importance cannot be ruled out in the health sector as well. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday. Helps in communication. Internet helps us remain connected to the outside world. We have seen that internet and technology have developed the quality of our lives. We have seen that uses of internet have evolved through the years. Internet is considered the most significant invention of the last 30 years. We just cannot imagine how our lives would be without internet. Internet does improve our lives but we cannot ignore the drawbacks. Yes, many issues like child bullying and account hacking continue to exist in today's world. People who are not aware are likely to be more exposed to such issues. Thus, our main objective is to spread awareness about cyber safety so that each one of us is safe. Here is a simple demonstration of how account hacking takes place in simple terms. A simple person with simple lifestyle. And here comes the change.
We are pleased to inform that you are one among the 10 lucky winners of the year and you are entitled to in cash 1 crore or rupees. To claim, please fill up the attached form and wait. Dear client, 20 lakhs has been withdrawn from your account as per your online requests. We look forward for further transactions. How could this happen to me? I'm sick of this life. I just want to scream. How could this happen to me? What the hacker has done is called email spoofing. It is the creation of email messages with a forced sender address. It is easy to do as there is no mechanism for authentication. Excuse me. People today are aware and well educated. I don't think they will fall for such lottery traps. You are right, people have become more educated but at the same time, hackers have developed new ways to trap you. For example, have a look at this email from one of the well known banks. Dear Value Customer, we have received notice that you have recently attempted to withdraw the following amount from your checking account while in another country. If this information is not correct, then someone unknown may have access to your account. As a safety measure please visit our link below to verify your personal information. The sender is attempting to trip the recipient into revealing confidential information by confirming it at the Fisher's website. If you would have received such mail from your bank, would you have fallen for the trap? Now let us know more about what experts term as phishing. Phishing. The attempt to acquire sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details often for malicious reasons. An identity thief, known as Fisher, will lure victims using emails and websites that seem harmless. But staying away from hackers doesn't require rocket science. One just has to follow some simple measures and precautions to stay safe from phishers. All one needs is awareness and guidance. Let us understand the same through an example. What an ideal person, who also leads a similar life, would do to stay safe from cybercrime. She too might receive such an email, but since she is fully aware of such frauds, she immediately gets it and reports it as spam. She might also receive a Fisher's mail, but instead of directly clicking the link they provide, she first off gets the information and eventually deletes it too. She also ensures that her password is strong, and she keeps changing it regularly. She also makes sure she completely logs out of her account every time. Apart from that, she keeps in mind to install and renew her computer's antivirus software so as to further safeguard her computer from unknown programs. Thus, it is quite clear that cybercrime is a critical issue at hand, and we have seen that if the safety measures are ignored, then the incidental expenses would be quite heavy. Spam accounts for 14.5 billion messages globally per day. In other words, spam makes up 45% of all emails. It is estimated that in US alone spam costs individuals and business organizations around $13 billion. Thus, I would like to conclude saying that in today's world, only those who are smart will survive. Things to keep in mind for combating cyber crimes. Make sure that your antivirus software is renewed. Do not open malicious websites or documents you receive through mail. Ensure you have a strong password. Do not fall for lottery frauds. Do not share any information regarding credit cards. Do not panic when you receive alert messages. It is most likely a fraud. Instead try to verify the information. Look out for such generalized terms in your emails. They are most likely spam. While giving personal information like passwords and PIN number ensure that this sign is intact. What to do if you are a victim? Disconnect your computer from the internet immediately. Ensure that you have backup for all the important files. Scan your PC using an antivirus software. The programs can detect as well as rectify the threats. Reinstall your operating system. If you are a victim of online fraud, contact your bank and close all accounts. Once the malware is removed, 
Do not consider the attack. It might backfire. So seek expert help. Hope you are now more confident in the Okay. So I want to finish this webinar here. At the end, I am very thankful to all of you that in a very large number you have registered as well as attended this webinar and make this makes this webinar successful. I have one request to you. Already you have got the mail, uh, email from our site. It contains one feedback form link. Kindly open that form and fill it and submit it. After submitting that, you will get your e certificate on your email ID. The link is also shared on the whatsapp group of the webinar so kindly fill the feedback form after submitting it you will get your certificate on your registered email id daily 100 certificates will be delivered so within a three to four days definitely definitely you will get your certificate on your email id again at the end i am very thankful to all of you that you have attended this webinar in a very large number, I promise you, our Sausta as well as our college will organize such webinar in future also. The information regarding this timely provided to you. Thanks again one of you to make this webinar very successful. Thank you.